el último día del semestre, ya con todas las actividades y con todos los eh, exámenes, proyectos que sé que tienen en esta época del semestre. Um, uh, ok, I, I will switch to English so I, I, I can present uh, George Adel. Uh, for us, it's really a pleasure. It's, uh, It's great to have him in, in, uh, in, this, in uh, this lecture. Uh, please um, take advantage of his knowledge of his 15 years in working in, uh, in uh, Starwood, uh, Marriott International, working in different areas. He has, he has worked in, uh, for full service resorts and luxury properties in Africa. Uh, Indian Ocean, Middle East, uh, in the, right now he's working in, uh, in Florida and uh, di covering different activities, revenue, uh, revenue operations. So really, really um, pay attention to what he, he has to say. Um, he, has, he has told me that he would like to, uh, to have a, a more interactive presentation, like, Um, he's open to all the questions and uh, uh, the, the topics you will, you will want to, to ask him. Um, and uh, his, his topic for, for, this, for this lecture will be the best practices for the hotel distribution and revenue management with the industry experts. So, um, George, really thank you very much for, for accepting this, this invitation to the, for this lecture. And uh, welcome to, to, to Ecuador and welcome to, to our university. Thank you so much uh, for, uh, for the introduction. Um, it's my pleasure. So my name is George Adel. I am uh, originally from Egypt and you can tell from my heavy accent, of course, that I'm not an American citizen. Uh, I started with the Starwood 2003, 17 years ago as welcome desk agent. Uh, and then I started moving to reservations, revenue management, Uh, I did opening in Egypt uh, for a Limeridian brand hotel on South Sinai, uh, a resort. And then I moved to the Seychelles in Indian Ocean and was in charge for two hotels. Um, I spent four years there. And then I moved to W Doha in Qatar, Middle East uh, for three years. It was a hotel and residences. So I have also some experience for uh, apartment rental and residence part But it's, it's familiar in Middle East, Middle East they do this a lot uh, for expatriates. Uh, and then I joined W South Beach team on uh, 2016 in June. And here I am uh, almost four and a half years later. Um, so I wanted this introduction just first to give you an idea what I did. So I, whatever question you have, you can just interrupt me, feel free to interrupt me and say, you have a question. I think it's better to start to answer some question along the way um, for any topics that I cover or anything else that comes in your mind while I'm speaking about anything, feel free to, uh, to ask the question uh, at any time. Um, I have very good experience basically for revenue management, but also operation as well um, for corporate and resorts, since I did also corporate side uh, in uh, Middle East um, groups, So sales aspect as well, anything related to sales, uh, I will be happy to answer. Um, anything about benchmark, anything comes to your mind, even FMB, little bit, you know, because revenue management is not only rooms, but also uh, in most uh, hotels, we look also after uh, food and beverage as well and banquet and catering. So this is also a big component as well. Uh, not as much here at W South Beach because we have third parties handling the FMB, but uh, in my previous experience, I used to be in hotels making more money from food and beverage than rooms. So again, feel free to ask anything related to revenue management for FMB as well. Um, before I start, is there any question? All right, uh, so I just prepared a few slides. Uh, I don't like too much long presentations. Uh, I like more to touch base on one point and start to speak about it. So I just um, wanted to share some of the distribution partners and the channels that we have for the hotel industry. 
uh, with you. Uh, and then I will touch base on each one quickly. And then I have some talking points as well that it's very important for from revenue management standpoints like budgeting, forecast, pricing, you know, and what tools we use to help us to decide on the right strategy uh, that I won't touch base as well with you. Uh, so we'll start with this distribution of channels. Of course, the way to sell something, you need to make sure you're maximizing your exposure to audience to guests in different markets. Um, I think everybody familiar with uh, online travel agencies like OTAs, uh, Expedia, Booking.com, uh, most famous, of course, and you have Priceline as well. Uh, so this is big distribution and channel floss for us. Uh, and I will touch base again, what is the benefits for OTAs uh, in a minute. Um, then you have the GDS, which is it stand for Global Distribution System. Uh, this is like Travelport, Sabre, and Amadeus. Again, this is a big uh, channel for us. And most of the corporate business books through GDS, plus also some travel agent as well for uh, consortia that it's luxury segment. Uh, then you have the group intermediary partners. Like This is like third party for groups, uh, incentive houses, um, something like C-Event. So if somebody group houses that they want to book incentive trip or a large groups normally they use this uh, platform to source hotels and to receive RFP, which is rate uh, for certain period um, so that we bid for. And last but not least, you have, of course, uh, the wholesale and leisure uh, business. We call it also FIT sometimes. And this has changed a lot from uh, 10 to 15 years ago to nowadays before we didn't have any dynamic uh, pricing or rates. We we used to have contract with with wholesaler. Like if you have in Germany, they have two in Germany. Let's say it's a very famous uh, tour operator. So you would have a contract with them by seasons, right? And sometimes you give them allotment. If you if if you're familiar with the term, that you give them certain rooms that they can sell with a release period per contract. Nowadays, there is not many work with this because again, this is very static old school way. Uh, and now a lot of with Expedia and Booking.com and OTAs, they're much more advanced with the channels and, and platforms use. Uh, and it's much more dynamic the way we do the business now. So this old school, you, they could be selling $500 rate on the contract, but if you don't have compression and the hotel, you have a lot of rooms to sell. So you start to reduce rates. To $300 rates. So there is no competitive for this old school tour operator anymore because the hotel is selling directly much lower than their contract, which 10 years ago it should, it used to be the other way around that their contract could be 60 to 50% discount from what we sell directly to customer, right? So this is again changing a lot. Still, few partners work with this static contract that they cannot support uh, any dynamic rates. But the majority, they work with dynamic rates, uh, same way as OTAs. Any questions so far? Am I speaking too fast or? Do we have any question right now? Feel free to um, put them in the chat if you want to, if you don't want to open your mic. I think we are doing good so far. Okay, I like questions, guys. So please don't uh, be quiet. All right. Okay, so just quickly, I, again, I mentioned OTAs, online travel agencies. They are a big um, component of our business mix, and um, in some hotels, they can drive 20, 30 percent of the business. You know, uh, they are much more important in small individual hotels than chains big chains like marriott because if 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 a hotel uh, down the street with 50 rooms it's 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 owned by individual owner they really don't have any big distribution channels to to sell the, the you know they don't have the power like for marriott or ihg or four season you know behind their product to sell so for this small and individual hotels otas is very important because this is how they sell if if they do good with Expedia and Booking.com, for example, they, their business is good. And if they don't do well and the business declining from the, this OTAs, actually their business is bad because they don't have 
heavy weight for the distribution channel that they own. Um, I just put here a few things like it's it's what are the benefits again reaching to customer uh, to drive incremental booking um, merchandising opportunities of course to se to sell the hotel to different markets different segments uh, we still control the pricing and inventory because everything dynamic and now Expedia and Booking.com most of the OTAs. I remember 15 years ago, I used to go to each portal to start to open and close room type by day and to change pricing manually. While now there is a channel manager that they connect our system directly to the OTAs. So whatever price I have in my hotel on Marriott.com is the same one selling on Expedia and everywhere else. So it's much more dynamic, much more easier you know, it's it's everything on real time. So when I change pricing, I just need to do one process, one step in our revenue management system. And this goes across all distribution channels. While before, you had to disconnect and connect to maybe 10 platforms to change by day. So it's much easier now. So we have full control of this. Um, Cost-effective distribution channel. Yeah, cost-effective, I think, for Marriott, not necessarily for the rest of small um individual hotels because the commission big chains like marriott or ihg or hilton pays to otas it's negotiated very well so normally they don't pay as much as a small hotel you know down the street or a small individual chain with with few hotels you know so uh, for for marriott and big chains this is not a very costly uh distribution channel because it, it the commission could be as low as travel agent commission, which is 10%, right? Um, I, Chris, if you wanna ask, you can open your mic. Okay, hey, hi, George. I, hey. I had a question about the, the OTAs. You said that this is recommended like for big um, hotels like Marriott and like in general, big, bigger chains. But for example, if you're a small hotel and you're not in any of these OTAs, it's kind of hard for you to actually get more customers. So um, you said that the commission, like the minimum commission was 10%. What could be like your strategy, strategy as a small hotel in with the OTAs? So, the, okay, it's a good question. Uh, Maria? Yeah. It okay. Matter. Yeah, so it's, so small hotels, every hotel, just to tell you the OTAs, they have, they have target to add new hotels to their portfolio as well. Why? Because each hotel they add, no matter the size, it's more revenue for them because they make commission. So for a small hotel, even five rooms, it's not difficult to get into a contract with Expedia or Booking.com or any other, you know? Even sometimes they make contract for only one unit. Like if, if somebody has a villa or somewhere, or here we are condominium hotel at W South Beach, we have sometimes owner, on one unit, you can have it actually sold on, on OTAs, all right? Why? Because they don't lose any money over it. If they sell, okay, they're getting commission. If not, they don't lose anything, right? Uh, so normally the commission is a big part because for small hotels, they could be paying 20, 25% commission. And it's still, still good business for a small hotel. Why? Because otherwise the room will be empty. So it's better to sell you know, and they don't have global sales team. Like Marriott, we have global sales team. Every country, we have our sales team, right? It's a big chain. So there is a lot of spending going through our sales team international in a different international market. While a small hotel, they don't have much manpower before this. So they use Expedia platform or booking.com to reach out to customer in France or in Italy or in Brazil or in Ecuador, right? So they are saving a lot on traveling and marketing by using this platform, even though they, can, they need to pay a little bit more commission. Did I answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions so far? All right, and just to, to give you a little bit idea about, so Expedia and Booking.com will always talk about it. I mean, there is other small, but this is a giant, two big companies. Uh, you might know that Booking.com actually, it's, it's, it's part of Priceline and Agoda. So Priceline is the main and the mother company and they own 
booking.com and Agoda together, right? Um, and also they own the open table, by the way. It's operated by booking.com, if you didn't know this, where you can book restaurants, um, right? So Expedia and booking.com, they work totally different. Uh, there are two big companies, but if you look at the segmentation, booking.com much more known for outside US. So if you go to Europe, booking.com actually much more famous as OTA as Expedia. If you go to Middle East, everybody book with booking.com. Local people love booking.com because they have much more um, interactive portal. They have very good customer service. They have a lot of language like in China, Asia, Middle East. Booking.com is much more uh, flexible with the language, also the content that they sell to the guest. They can interact very well with, uh, with the Arabic language. So in Middle East, Booking.com is more famous. While you come to US, it's 70% of the domestic business comes from Expedia. So just you to know, like they are not head to head everywhere. In, in US, Expedia much more strong than Booking.com. In Europe and Middle East, Booking.com much more stronger. So which is good. So when you are having both, actually, you're covering much more space, geographical space outside of your domestic market. So it's important to have both together to get more business. Uh, I will move forward to the global distribution system. Again, this is its GDS. It's most of the travel agents use the system. It's like when you go to book a flight, they use their own GDS also to book a flight. Uh, it's very old school, but still a lot of travel agents use this. Um, you still, there is a spending component. Maybe you, it's good to mention as well, like, even with Expedia, you can invest money now to drive business. Uh, Booking.com, not yet. I know that they have some project to pilot some um, marketing opportunities for partners, but Expedia, actually, you can make standalone campaign to promote your hotel. You say, it's okay. My, my market manager from Expedia, I have $10,000 I want to spend every month to drive from revenue from certain market. Like, okay, this is the season for Ecuador, this month, people travel from Ecuador to Miami. So I want to target people in Ecuador. You can actually go in more detail saying, okay, I want to target the people with the income of $100,000 or more. Like you can actually go into too much details for what exactly you are targeting by market. You know, so because it's, it's my campaign, so I can tailor this the way I want. But of course I need to have the data to support my decision, which market, which income I'm targeting, right? Uh, let's say Europe, it's our market in the summer from the French market. Okay, I want to spend more money in March, April, because this is a planning time for families coming to US. So I want to spend time, money to target these families in France, March, April, to get bookings for June and July and August. All right. So with Expedia, you can do this. You can spend money to get more. And we, of course, we track the ROI. Uh, which is return on investment. So we track this as well. And there's another thing called travel ads. So this is like a bidding. You say, it's okay. I want to bid for this stays $1 per click, you know, to be displayed on the top of the page of Expedia. And of course, every hotel trying to bid and you have a daily budget to spend to, tr to try to drive a little bit more uh, business for certain period. GDS as well is the same. We do the same. We do campaigns with GDS. You do some feature um, with like Sabre. We're on the feature uh, list for Sabre. So if somebody looking for Miami, you, you appear on the five hotels on the top of the list. So it's everything related to money now. If you want to drive share, you need to see which channels you want to drive business from and you start to invest. Because if you don't invest money, your competition and competitors spending money to drive business and then you lose market share. So of course, it depends how much money you have and how much money you want to spend. And it's very important always to track the return on investment because if you are spending $1 and the return, the ROI is $10, this means every dollar one to 10, which is, it's a perfect, right? So if you spend $100,000 a month, you are getting a million dollar revenue. So this is a very good ratio. But if you are spending $1 and you are getting $1, this means you are losing your money because this is not a good ROI. So we keep spending, but also tracking the return on investment on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis to make sure that we adjust 
and change our strategy, you know, to drive more business and reduce, of course, the expense if we can. So this is GDS, and then you have the TMCs, which is travel management companies. Uh, this is the mega agencies, like normally this is like uh, Carlos and Wagenly, if you heard about, this is like a TMC. So they have big platform, uh, a lot of small uh, corporate uh, business. They use this platform to book their uh, corporate uh, stays in hotels. So if somebody from, from um, small company or even big companies like Deloitte or some other companies like Priceline, um, they wanted to book a stay for a corporate business somewhere. They use TMCs reservation system to book their corporate rate in any hotel, right? So most of this it's used for um, business traveler and corporate business. Uh, there's another thing called consortia, which is, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this or not, but it's mostly for luxury hotels. This is a very important segment for us. Uh, to give an example, like Virtuoso or uh, American Express, uh, fine hotels and resorts. So they have selected hotels in each market, luxury hotels that they promote and they sell to their network. It's very important for luxury hotels to, to be in, included. Uh, and this is normally the book at your rack rate, at retail rate. That's why this, this segment is really important because they book the highest ADR normally uh, for the hotel. Wholesale, I spoke about this briefly, but this is again, it's, it moved from static contract many years ago. Now, most of the partners, they have dynamic access uh, actually, for us, with Marriott, Expedia, actually, now, they have the platform for uh, wholesale dynamic. So if some, if, if a tour operator in a in, in certain area um, wanted to book Marriott Hotel, they need to go through Expedia platform and to book the rates for wholesaler. All right. So it's, it's really, it's, it's amazing because, and we are very happy with this because we used to have rate uh, parity issues before because when you have a contract with wholesaler at $200 rate for the month of March, right? And then you cannot change the rate, it's contracted rate. And then you see that there is any event happening or you book a big group and then you start to drive rate to $500 because you see that you don't have much rooms to sell. Then this is what would, would, would cause a lot of rate challenges for us because the tour operator selling these rates online at $200, our loyal guest, they need to pay $500 for the same stay. And we got a lot of complaints. We call it best trade guarantee. And I'm sure you, you are familiar with the term, you know? And moving from a static contract to dynamic, it's helped us a lot to reduce all this best trade guarantee claims that this complaint that they found lower rate on other channels than Marriott.com. So again, everything is moving to dynamic you know, and this is this is the new now, the new norm that we 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 dealing with. Um, any questions so far about distributions um, channels? No, I don't think we have. Yep, we have one, Michelle. Hi, George. Yes, my question is. Um, which distribution channels would you recommend for an hotel that is like starting its operation, like a new small hotel? Okay, to be honest with you, if, if, if I own a hotel, a small hotel, I would try all channels and then you start to do analysis for what, of course, if you are sold out, if it's small hotel 10 rooms and you open all channels and you are getting most of the booking, let's say from Expedia and you are paying 25% commission, and you are sold out all the time, this is not the best you can do. So normally what I would do, I will try to see lower cost channels and to try to test, maybe not to give my all inventory to Expedia to sell, but maybe I locate three rooms to Expedia and two rooms to booking.com, whatever, and try to see the low cost channels if I can drive more business because you might be getting walk-in, somebody coming to the hotel from if, if, if it's in a good location, and this is the best client because this is walking in directly to your hotel and you sell the same rate and you are not paying commission. So you can imagine for this walk-in business, you are not paying 20 or 25%. This is directly hitting your profit, right? So what I would do normally is that to try to see if what is the low cost channels and try to work through this to maximize your revenue because 
Revenue management is very important to drive revenue for the hotel, top line, right? But again, we need always to be thoughtful about bottom line as well that goes to ownership. Because if we started to sell the hotel all the time, but you are paying too much cost commissions, this is not the smartest way to do business. And that's why some hotels, they started to be much more tougher negotiating with the OTAs like Expedia and Booking.com because they know that they are paying a lot of money and they want to drive business through our own channel because if somebody, and that's why there is loyal program like Bonvoy or Marriott Owners, you know, sorry, Hilton Owner. So why companies trying to do their own loyalty program? Because this is much lower cost and you have loyal guests. They book directly with us. We don't pay commission to anybody and they take points. While if they book with Expedia, they don't get any points, all right? So again, go, sorry, I, I just try to explain more, but just going back to your question, my recommendation is to try. And of course, if you have compression, then you start to reduce first the high cost channels and to try to focus more with low cost channels, right? Because most of the travel agents, they work with 10%. OTAs, if they're taking for you 20% or more, then this is not profitable channel for you. Then you need to focus more on lower uh, profitable channel. But if you are not selling out, another thing, like if, if, if you are working with all and your occupancy is 50%, you don't need to cut any channel because you are not selling out. You are not displacing any revenue. So it's better to get business through high cost channels than not to get at all, right? It's better to get booking from Expedia and pay 20 or 20%. So you're still making 75 to 80% profit, correct? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, sorry, hi. Yeah, we have one. Uh, I'm Christian. Hi, hi George. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, thank you. I, ha I have a question. Like, I was wondering if there is the, the there is these OTAs that always I don't know like take advantage of the of the how do you how do you call this like the public um exposure uh market saying like that like for your hotel like marriott or other hotels they always uh manage the market in some ways because they give the the, the opportunity to other to other hotels to get exposure by paying more uh the only question i have is if you have a global community that you can manage, couldn't you create a, how do you call this? Uh, um, a platform, an online platform to get also the, the exposure advantage or can't you? Okay, it's very, it's very, it's a very good question. Uh, thank you. Okay. Just to tell you, like Marriott as a company, or I mean, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of Marriott, but the big companies, they always try to focus on what we do the best, which is hospitality, right? Expedia and Booking.com, they are the best in enhancement and tools and system and platform because they spend much more money because this is the bread and butter. These companies, they work through only platforms they're selling, while Marriott and other hotel management companies, they work through Management, it's a management company. Like you have people working in hotels, serving guests. This is what we do as a hospitality company, right? So if we try to do everybody's job, I don't think this is, will be, we will do, we will, we will be as successful as we are now. And I think it's much more uh, cost effective to use platform like Expedia with their too much investment to reach to their client than it started to invest in platform for us. Actually, we have our platform. Like if you if you check online Marriott.com and we have Bonvoy um, hey, membership as well. You know, you know. So sorry. this is this is what sorry. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah, yeah, you're right, actually. But it's different to have a, a website and to uh, and to have a simple server than to have multiple servers uh work uh uh capturing uh Sorry, uh, like taking advantage of the pla of an online platform uh, worldwide, saying like this, um, if you pay Expedia, they have worldwide, uh, uh, 
how do you call it? exposure something like that i don't know how another word but if you pay if you pay for another server and another server that's what expedia does to to get exposure all around the world if marriott, marriott has a worldwide wide brand also uh, through marketing and publicity if i'm right or wrong but it could be interesting to have a uh, I don't know, uh, Marion connection, some uh, servers, which you could get more users to get exposed to uh, working with government or, or whatever other connections you could get through through the the servers that the, the government manage. And it's quite interesting. Yeah, you can get a, a, a web, uh, like a, a, a web page, but getting a, a an app and then using it to to get to get more exposure through the through the internet uh, like facebook or instagram or whatever for people to download you could get more direct contact to the client than the than the expedia or booking.com or or the the other ones that's what I was wondering. But, but we're, we're trying this, Christian. Like we we have our apps, by the way. Like there is apps. There is also we oh, yeah. as a hotels. Like we we actually have our own web, like Instagram, Facebook. We have all this. Actually, there is another point, and it's good to mention this. We have and it our, costs a lot. We have our PR agency, like public relation oh. agency. We have. Yes public relation in Brazil and different countries to promote the hotel, you know, and to speak the same language as the country we are trying to reach out to. I mean, the, the married hotels that were encouraged to do this, you know, this is our strategy to reach out to the most people. But again, going back to as more you invest, it's good. But again, Expedia, they will always be reaching to different people because the people go to try to look for married hotels or W South Beach. This is people has brand loyalty. Right, but there is some people they just go to shop for the for Miami Beach, and normally you cannot target all these guests because again it's it's amazing cost to try to get everybody hitting you know search for South Beach in Miami, you know because everybody's trying to bid higher for these words, uh -huh. uh, and and there are some people they don't have the loyalty for the brand. There are some people trying to say it's okay I have three hundred dollar rate uh, as budget and I want to go next week. Let me search. It's the same for me. Like if I want to do shopping, I mean, of course you can go to Amazon, you see all everybody selling different products and you choose the best, right? Based on the reviews or the, the business or the promotions. So whether if you go only to Marriott or W South Beach, you see only one hotel. And in the end, you want to compare this hotel with other hotels and you start, uh -huh. you know, so, so Expedia normally or booking.com or OTA, they have this, you know, you can use Trivago or you know, kayak or whatever platform to start to see comparison is the same for the flight. So even though we spend a lot, there is still a lot of people that don't have loyalty for a brand that they just want to see I, what is the best deal for this stay in this location at that time. So okay. that's why we can never work alone. We always try to work with partners to maximize the revenue and, yeah. you know, and and also if you see like there's something called yieldability and this is what we do if we are selling out in any specific dates especially late, let's say festive season now in a normal year you know i have 10 rooms also only to sell so normally what our revenue management system will do will start to shut down otas and other distribution channels and leave only rooms on marriott.com why because we want to direct the last room available through our channels to save cost. Does this ah, make that's sense? That's a good strategy. Exactly. So this is also, it's called like, yieldable. We, we don't sell our last, last room available to OTAs, you know, uh, and our revenue management system that we use, you know, has the, cap uh, has the capacity to do this, you know. Sometimes even you could see the system start to shut down OTAs for lower room type and sell only suites because the system work with hurdle revenue, which means this is the minimum revenue of the day through OTAs, $2,000, let's say. So you sell $2,000 and above only with OTAs, but for our system, it could be the hurdle is $1,500. So you could see different room type selling low rate on Marriott.com 
and you see the same dates for the same hotel selling higher room type. Why? Because we are trying to maximize on profit, right? We are yeah. trying to direct the guests to our own channels. Quite interesting. Thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, so I just brought here a few talking points. I don't know if we'll have the time to go through it all, but um, it's very interesting because I think the most important, I mean, this is not an order. I just, whatever I remember, I put here, <coughs> excuse me. So if you look at pricing, I think this is a very important component for us. Excuse me for a second, please. So pricing, of course, I mean, this is what we breathe as revenue leaders in each property. What is your pricing strategy, right? Um, how much you are selling for certain days? Like we try to do pricing for one year ahead, day by day, right? Of course, we have the tools to help us to decide what is the right trade that we need to sell for every day. Um, and just, I'm sure some of you know, or majority knows, like there is a lot of components that you need to know first before deciding on what rate you need to sell, right? So seasonality is very important. You know, this is high demand, low demand based on historical data you have from previous years. You need to see your competition and competition mean not every hotel in the market. You need to have a focus on a circle of your direct competitors. And normally it's four or five hotels. You say, this is my main competitors. And you decide on competitors based on the location or the targeted customers or the product, similar product or sim similar brand. And then you start to see what price they are selling and where you want to be at, right? Very important component also, it's what business on the books for a certain period, because if you have group in 2021 in March, right? And this hotel is taking 70% of your inventory, you will start to sell higher rates regardless that your comp set selling low because you don't have the same group. So you cannot be selling low rate just because your competition is selling low rate and actually you don't have much rooms to sell, all right? So it's all this component you need to know before deciding what rate and where, where is your price position? Because if you want to be a rate leader among your comp set, then you need to be higher, right? Uh, if you, and then you start to do promotion after this, but the price point is very important. Uh, and again, we look at one year, 365 years ahead pricing, and we keep it changing this regularly just to see because a lot of things change. Uh, and we have the revenue management tool to do, to do this. So if you are selling rate, for any given dates for next year, and then you start to book a group business, then your rate needs to change, right? Because you just booked half of your hotel. So all this you need to look at all the time and you start to adjust, you know, based on the market change, pricing change and business on the books and the demand, of course, like COVID now is totally different story because now there's not much happening. So basically now is not as dynamic as it used to be because we know that the hotel running 30% occupancy, right? So there is no compression, there is no group business. So you need to say, it's okay. I want to sell $400 rate. This is what I want to do, regardless what the competition is selling. Even if the competition go $200, I cannot sell this rate. Like you need to decide as a strategy team with sales, general manager, and of course, ownership get involved as well because it's their hotel. They don't want to make, they don't want to sell low rates, let's say, or they don't mind selling low rates and to make more revenue. So it's it's you need to, to have the strategy, right? It's aligned between us as a team in the hotel and also with ownership as well. Any question about pricing? Because this is very interesting topics. Um, and I know some sometimes many people they have some question or 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 clarification about this. No? All right, uh, market share. So market share is very important as well. Uh, actually, like most of the general managers and uh, executive committee team were measured actually based on market share and your ref par um, index. 
Uh, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the uh, index, you know, like, you know, especially for RevPAR. So if you're 100%, you're, you're, you have your fair share, where if you are losing or gaining, you know, above 100, then you are, you know, you're above your fair share, lower, you know, but again, this is all based on your concept. Because if, if sometimes my 90% RevPAR index, this is my fair share, because I know my concept, they are luxury boutique hotels, mostly suites. I don't have as much suites as they have. So normally the rates are much higher. So I cannot be competing at 100%. So it's very important to know what is the RevPAR index target for the hotel and you start to work through this. But market share is very important. Uh, STR reports, this is how we know our market share. Before, I remember so many years ago, we used to call each hotel and to get the data in the end of each month or each week. So you say, what was your occupancy? What is the ADR? And you start to make Excel sheets to figure out what is the RevPAR index for the comp set and your, your fair share. You know, this is, was like 10, 15 years ago. We're not allowed to do this anymore, right? And that's why there is STR, which is Smith Travel Researches company that does this for the hotel. So we receive a report every week for weekly report and monthly, of course. And you see how you are performing by day, occupancy, ADR, and RevPAR in comparison with your comp set. And of course, this report is, is, is always questioned by corporate or ownership, or even the general manager and the hotel team. If we start to see that we're losing, you know, like if everybody doing like our comp set doing, let's say 60% occupancy and we're doing 40%, we always see like, why are we doing so bad? You know, like, unless you have a good reason for this, you say, no, but we, are, we want to sell high rate. We don't want to drive occupancy, but our ADR, uh, average rate is much higher. So we are having the same ref part that we would do with 60% at lower rate. So actually it's better. So this is, again, it's all about the strategy. If it's occupancy driven strategy or ADR driven, but in the end of the day, the ref part is the most important component here. Any question about uh, market share, STR reports? Right. Doesn't look, um, doesn't look like. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think we have any questions. Okay. Then you have forecasting uh, and budget uh, time. Um, so budget we do it once a year for the following year. Like, and the process of course starts a little bit uh, earlier than you know. Like, every company or hotel has their own uh, timeline. So we start, let's say, in July, and we have corporate discussion, and we have, you know, um, and once it's approved, we have an owner discussion, and if once it's approved, this is our budget for next year. And the budget is one time. You do your budget, and you don't change it every month. That's why we have the forecast, because the forecast, you can do forecast every month for future months. So you have one budget for the year, but we, every 30 days, we do forecast for the next 90 days. And sometimes even you touch base for the full year, you know, in case something change. So you could be in February and you can touch December if there is big event cancel or big event just announced that they will do, you know, you can, you can change your forecast for 10 months from now, you know, that's fine because something change. If nothing change, you don't need to, to touch, you know, your forecast for 10, 10 months ahead. But normally every month we do three months forecast, all right? Again, forecast, there's a lot of components here. You need to look at the, the coming actually um, point that travel click, which give competitive intelligence data. And again, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this or not, but this is like, we use this travel click uh, platform a lot for market intelligence for our competition. Um, so you see what business you have on the books against your comp set for every day for future, you can look at the pace report, you see if you are ahead or down, you see if your competition, they have more business on the books than you or not. You could see also by segments, you can see they have more groups, they don't have more groups, you are good, you are bad. What is the soft period? It's very important this because if you know, you have to know your enemies, right? I mean, they're not enemies, but this is how we like, you need to know very well your comp competition and what they have, you know, for future, because if they are all sold, out their meeting space for a certain week, 
this means you are the only one have a meeting space open. So you can actually push rates and sell more higher price. Why? Because there is nobody else has this space, right? While if nobody has any business on the books for the same week, then you know it's okay. There's a tough competition because my competitors, they have all the space open for that week. I need to be more flexible and to give added value or lower rate. So it's very important to know this. It's the same also for Agency 360. And this is, if you want to know the travel agents and corporate business by account, where they are producing for your comp set, you see that if you are actually getting your fair share or not. And once you know this, you can actually target and reach out to your partners and see why you're not getting your fair share and start to do action plan to try to drive more business. Um, the last point here, it's rate 360. So again, rate shopping, we do rate shop all the time. I don't need to go online to start to look for rates for certain days because I receive reports and I can go to do the rate shop on uh, travel click for next. You can set up the rates you want for 90 days, for six months, for one year, for your comp set. And you can put length of stay, what room product. You can actually tailor the report and you put automated delivery. You receive it twice a day, twice a, a week or whenever you want. Of course, we pay for this, but you know, and you have certain rate shop uh, per month. But once you receive this, you could see your pricing comparing to the comp set and you see if you need to change your pricing strategy. All right. If I want to see my competition, how what are the rates are selling for February, you know, President Weekend, I can see to see each one how what rate for every day by each hotel, and see com in comparison with my rate, and then decide if this is good enough for me or not, or if I need to change. So once you have all this competitive intelligence, of course, this is we do the forecast so going back to the forecast this is how you start to do forecast because you know what business you have on the books what's happening in the market for the next 30 days or 90 days and then you start based of the historical data you have from previous years you know how much you can pick up within 30 days or 60 days all right and you start to add up to what you have on the books and this is your forecast any questions so far Yes, we have one in the chat. It's how W South Beach is managing forecasts in this time of the pandemic, and how do you see corporate travel in the next years? All right. Um, I always believe under promise, over deliver. Okay, so it's 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 very important to be more realistic when you do forecast, because if you and also just to touch base also on the importance of forecast, because once I do forecast occupancy, all the operation team start to schedule their team based on the occupancy. So if I say on the this weekend, we will be at 30% occupancy. So they start to do their schedule for the week based on this room sold, right? And if we start closer and we start to do 20%, this means we have too many people for much less rooms, right? So actually the payroll will be much higher than what we should because you are not driving the same revenue. So this is, so you are, you are spending more than the revenue you get. So this is not a good forecast, right? The other way around, if you say I will be 30% occupancy and they're staffing for 30% and you do 50%, this means there is not enough people in the hotel to clean room or to welcome guests or to deliver service. So you end up with service opportunity, with issues, with challenges for operation, and guests not happy. So this is just to show you how important it is to do a good forecast. Again, it's 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 a forecast, so there is always error, you know. But you should you should normally be within five percent, right? So five percent more or less, this is acceptable when you do forecast, unless there is really something to change, like a royal family crew, you know, come, you know. Friday night, of course, I didn't forecast. I didn't know that a crew will come to into your room, right? But we are always prepared for this. But I'm talking about normal situation that you should be within 5% more or less. So for this time, we know how much we pick up every week because it's a very similar trend from week to week. Now we started to approach the festive season a little bit different. But before this, you know, like, okay, if you are doing 40% in the weekend, Friday, Saturday, it's every weekend almost the same, you know? Because it, there is no compression, there is no groups, there is not much activities, you know. So this is the way we do the forecast. 
And if you start to see much more on the books, like if I see next week, I have already 40% on the books, this mean, okay, I will do more than 40%. Because if I pick up 5% normally from now to next weekend normally, and I have 40%, then I will do 45%, right? So you always see what you have on the books and you start to see the trend from previous weeks, how much you pick up from today until the dates you are forecasting and you add it up, right? And of course, like if you want to be more precise, you see it's okay. We we have wash cancellation, five rooms. We get last minute, 10 rooms and you add up all this and this is your forecast, right? Okay. The other one about corporate business, right? Sorry, this is what the second part. I mean, we are not really a corporate business hotel. I mean, WSO, I used to be in much more like corporate environment. Uh, it's, it's, it's mostly here for uh, leisure. Uh, it's not really, and our hotel is luxury hotel where our rates very high. So normally if any corporate project or corporate travelers, you know, unless they're coming really for a holiday with their families, don't stay in our hotel because our rates are too high. Like there is no corporate person will come to pay four or $500 in a weekend for, for business. Um, so normally it's, and again, there is a ban for traveling, you know, for the next six months. So there is not much happening unless really some project that they are not restricting traveler for their people, which is very minimum now, because it's still a lot of big companies there. They're having travel ban for the next six months. So I, I would just project if I'm in a corporate hotel that the corporate business uh, until June, it's, it's, it will be very slow. Thank you, George. Any other questions? All right, uh, I, I think we have only five minutes. So I want just to go quickly here, touch base on group pricing. Uh, so I spoke about pricing in general, but groups is very important. And again, it depends on, there is group hotels, there is hotels with massive conference room and the groups are very important. So this is something they spend too much time, you know, getting the right fit. Uh, considering groups is very important, the number of rooms, right? The meeting space, if they take meeting space or not. FMB spent for the groups because they have a lot, you have your catering, you know, um, the banquet revenue, it's driven by groups. So if you don't have this, this is a big component of your revenue. You are not generating this. So if, if a group coming only rooms and you don't have any conference meeting, it's like, incentive let's say right this is we need to drive more rate from this group so if a group coming spending needs only rooms you know and no fmb spend we need to drive rate and and we do this normally for citywide if a citywide uh, hot, uh event coming let's say and they will be using the convention center and they need only rooms in the hotel we normally offer higher rate why because we will not get any fmb revenue from this group right we would rather not take this group and take another group and have our meeting space, you know, our restaurants full, you know. So this is very important when you do pricing to see what revenue will generate not only for rooms, but also for other revenue and FMB. And another thing also the pattern for group. So the pattern is very important because if somebody coming on Wednesday and leaving on Saturday, this is not a good group. Why? Because if you have half of the hotel leaving on Saturday, you cannot replace this business for the weekend. So it's kind of breaking the weekend. Instead of having a good length of a stay, Friday, Saturday, your hotel will be busy on Friday, but Saturday the hotel will be empty. So this is very important to see the pattern and you make sure you are not losing from transit business because the group leaving in, a, in, in the middle of the weekend, if it makes sense. So pattern is very important. Sometimes we'll try to incentivize groups to move the dates. So if they want to come Saturday, let's say, we don't like Saturday because we are very busy on the weekend. We try to give them lower rate and tell them, if you come Sunday, we will give you lower rate, you know? Or if you, so we try to move. If we have a group leaving Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, then we start, try to have a back-to-back -back group. We'll try to move the group toward where we want, you know, and, and give them a better deal. So and so to have the full week with a good pattern for occupancy. Of course, it doesn't work all the time because there are some groups already not, they're not flexible, but at least we try this to make sure that we have a good occupancy, you know? And this is how we maximize revenue because if you start to have a spike 
every second day, you are losing a lot of opportunity. If you have to be 60% tomorrow 40, after tomorrow 70, you know, you don't want this. You want to make sure you have a good occupancy level, you know, and not miss opportunity. We do also rate shop for groups. Just this is something like there is a company also we use, all right, to shop our competition because groups rate, you cannot see it online, right? Like you can go to Expedia or Booking.com or even the hotel website to see, okay, I want to see what they are selling. But group rates, if we want to see our competition, what trades are selling for a certain period, how you know this? So there is a company actually does a rate shop for us. So they send one lead for our competition that we decide and send the same lead to us. And normally we don't know because they, want, they should send us rate comparison, including our hotel for different dates. So say it's okay, this week for January, all right, 2022, we send this lead to these five hotels, including us. And this is the rates we got. And we start to compare our rates we, we offer to the comp set and see if the comp set offering very low if they, and what concessions also. So you could see also if they are waiving resort charge, if they are adding some additional upgrades, if they are adding something, what is the meeting space? Does it give it for free? Does it give it for, you know, rent? So. This is how you know your competition. Otherwise, you, you're just offering rates and you don't know what the rest of the hotel is doing. So this is, again, it's very important as well to know what your comp set doing. Any questions? I think we're on, on time, unless somebody has question or if you want me to keep going, whatever, guys, you decide. We, we I think we still have some time. Uh, I see you have two two other points. Maybe we okay. can we can go on with the, those ones. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so, any questions? No questions, right? To go move forward. Um, okay. FMB uh, revenue again. I mentioned earlier that it's a very important component for certain markets. Uh, in Middle East, hotels does more. Uh, hotels do more revenue from FMBs and rooms. Why? Because people like to eat, you know, uh, they have a lot of um, catering, outside catering for the hotels. You know, it's, it's, there is a restriction for alcohol, so people have no choice, they need to drink in the hotel. So there is a lot of reasons for this, but, and people like food. So normally hotels makes more revenue in certain area from FMB. US, okay, there is revenue as well, but it's not as much. But still, it's a very important component because if you look at the revenue generated in the hotel, you have rooms, you have FMB, you have other minor, like you have the spa, if you have a spa, right? If you have a golf, you have a golf, uh, if it's a golf resort. So this is sometimes it's, 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 it's a revenue generating department as well. Uh, if you have a club membership, right? This is goes like toward other revenue. Um, resort fee goes to other revenue. So there is other revenue as well that I, I will touch base just in a minute, but the FMB is very important. And again, revenue management also started to be more and more involvement, involving for FMB revenue. Uh, for timing, average per check, we check, you know, like you see, if are you making more money from food, from beverages, what promotions you need to run, happy hours, and again, you need to start to use the same strategy to drive revenue for the restaurant as well. Do you need to do more PR about it, social media? Do you need to get more events, you know? So, and it, it depends on each outlet, of course, but FMB revenue, it's, it's a huge uh, component for the revenue for the, each, any, any property in, uh, in any market, right? Uh, catering as well. This is, again, catering and events. If you have wedding, this is like for 100, 150 people. This will generate a lot of FMB revenue. More groups, meeting space you are using, and, and, and the bank revenue is also very important. So again, this is all goes under FMB revenue. Um, the last one, not, but not least, of course, it's, it's the other revenue. So other revenue, it has any rent you have in the hotel. If you are renting any, uh, any third party or shop or boutique or whatever you are renting, this is goes to other hotel, other revenue. Um, you have also, if you have, as I mentioned, a spa or any, you know, 
beach club membership, uh, beach access, cabanas uh, by the pool. So anything you generate that is not related to FMB or rooms, it goes to other revenue. And again, this is it's it went from hotels to other hotels. This could be a huge chunk of money if it's you have a lot of rental in the hotel or a lot of third parties are paying you rent. This is this is can be a very important component as well. This is not managed on daily basis, especially rental and this. This is something we don't decide dynamic like the whole pricing for rooms. Uh, but this is something it's fixed. So you do contract yearly contract. You could change, increase, or something, but. This is not something unless it's unless we're talking about spa revenue or golf or something else, you know. But this is something it's more static, you know, than uh, rooms and FMB. And voila, that's it from uh, my side. I mean, I can talk a lot more if anybody has question, but uh, you tell me. Thank you so much. Okay, so we will open the question. So if you have any other question, please let us know. Today, today is the last day of classes, so they are, they are a little oh, so bit. Everybody excited, right? To... <laughs> right. Good luck. It's our last day. Um, uh, I, I was thinking about uh, one of the talking points you were pre presenting and about the pricing, and what would be your strategy to stop uh, war price with the, your competitors? Like. This is really difficult because you, you start with a, a one price and your competitor go down and you, you do the same and then you start losing money. So what will be your strategy? Well, it's, it's a very good question it's, and it's very hard also because it depends on each hotel. It's different from hotel to another hotel. <clears throat> and also like each hotel price and has different strategy based on the number of rooms you have. Because if it's a small hotel, <coughs> excuse me, they don't have much rooms to sell. They are normally more rate driven than other hotels with 500 rooms hotel. Like, you know, so we have an our comp set, small boutique hotel, let's say 90 rooms. So of course they cannot drop rates because they will be sold out very fast. And in our concept also you have a hotel with 450 rooms. So they cannot be driving the same rate because the 450 rooms, they need to make sure they fill the hotel, right? And of course, it depends, like we have a lot of channels, thanks to Marriott, that we have a lot of rewards. Rewards is like, you know, you book with points. It's like when you book flights with points or any other, you know? So we have this segment that other hotels, individual hotels, they don't have. So you need to make sure also that you are not selling very very low rates because you want you want to maximize revenue by having these people consuming points in the hotel. Product very important. Uh, our hotel here is condominium hotel, so it's it's so there's a lot of people they own units but they have it in the rental program. So this is a little bit more complicated than other hotels. So there is certain profit that you want to achieve and rate, you know. So we cannot be selling very low rates and then you lose money actually once you, you, you share the revenue between you and the own unit, right? So there are certain rates we say it's okay, we cannot go lower than $300 rate, even if the competition is selling 150. Otherwise we lose money, you know? So each hotel is different. Uh, some hotels they don't care, say it's okay, I, I, I want to have some rooms. Otherwise the restaurant are empty because you need to think also about your FMB revenue. If you are running 20% occupancy and your restaurants are empty, you say maybe it's better to drop the rates and generate, lose a little bit more in the room rate, but gain some FMB. And, and because you have a lot of stuff working, you know, and you are paying them anyway. So it's, it's, it's each hotel different. Uh, we just did renovation, um, you know, the last six months. So the expectation is much higher. We are the best hotel product now on the beach, you know. A lot of high expectation from ownership. We want to sell high rates regardless, you know? So this is totally different strategy because we just renovated the hotel. We are less flexible with rates than we used to be before when the hotel was 10 years old. So all these components, it just, you know, just to give an idea, like when you do pricing strategy, you need to think about all this 
and you need to start to adjust based on the result because once you start to see your market share you need to see if this is a good result for you and everybody happy or not because if your ownership or marriott not happy this means you need to do something different otherwise the results will not change so you keep adapting and changing your strategy until you see the soft spot you know for where you maximize and you are doing profit more for the ownership does make sense sure definitely uh, it makes makes a lot of, of sense um do we have any other question okay so i think uh, i think we don't have any other question so um george again i would like to thank you for accepting this invitation this was a pleasure, pleasure. to have you here it was really nice to to have all this information and really really appreciate uh, you being of here course. and ladies let us know everything uh, talking about many strategies that you you are taking the hotel and that we could use uh, or the students could use when they go out to the to their to to work so really thank you very much i really appreciate and um please if you you come to ecuador please let me know so you you can visit our university absolutely it would be my pleasure thank you so much for the opportunity i really appreciate and i hope uh, was useful in uh, in any way to everybody and uh, please stay in touch and let me know if anybody has any question later i can touch base and answer any questions perfect perfect thank you so much George. thank you so much have a great day thank you thank you very thank much. you and happy holidays thank you happy holidays you as well thank Chicos. you bye bye Happy bye -bye. Holiday. Nuestro último, nuestra última clase, nuestro último coloquio. Muchas gracias por haber participado. Muchas gracias por, por estar aquí. Eh, eh, espero que su fin de semestre sea exitoso y que les vaya súper bien. Y eh, los pocos chicos que me están faltando, que suban el, el, el informe final, por favor, necesito que lo suban eh, urgente para poder pasarles la nota. Igual. Espero que hayan aprendido mucho, que hayan aprovechado las, las charlas que, que, hemos, eh, que hemos tenido durante este semestre. Eh, hemos intentado tener una variedad de, de, de invitados de diferentes lugares, de diferentes, eh, con diferentes temas. Um, a veces se nos ha complicado con algunos, con algunos temas que nos hubiera gustado tener. Eso lo vamos a comple complementar con otras charlas que tengamos en el futuro. Ya estamos planificando charlas para el siguiente semestre. Nuevamente, muchas gracias. Eh, ha sido un placer eh, eh, compartir este semestre con ustedes. Que tengan un excelente fin de semestre, un excel una feliz Navidad y que el próximo año sea, sea mucho mejor que este de aquí. Cuídense mucho, chicos. Y chicos, eh, recuerden, si necesitan cualquier cosa, me avisan. Sí, porfa, cualquier cosa. Y eh, no se olviden de subir el resumen de este coloquio lo más pronto posible para poder pasarles las notas igual pronto y que puedan saber cuántos coloquios finales tienen, ¿ok? Listo. Gracias. 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 Gracias.